Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Maddie Chimber Podcast. Squeaky Chair Town. Hey. I got up five times because I wasn't sure if I started recording this or not. And guess what? I did. So, this is going to be a great hour of me thinking it's not recording. How many podcasts have been out there and people recorded like an hour and interview with a guest? And then they have to call them like a week later when they say they're going to air it. And they go, ooh, um... Remember how I wasted two hours two hours of your day? Um, didn't hit record. You see how I fucked up hours and that just killed any sort of humor that I could have got out of that? Why the fuck does that happen? How many proposals went south because a guy's like, Babe, blah, 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 blah. will you wary me? Fuck. And she goes, <laughs> uh, No, <laughs> you can't even talk. You're a dumb ass. I know, guys. This has been a good hour. Um, it's been a fun week. Uh, you know, I started meditating recently, so that's a real exciting thing. And I, you know, I oddly want to shit on me meditating, but it's making me feel better, and I feel bad about making fun of it. It's like the first time when you ever get like a new friend and you know, you guys are very, you know, cordial or whatever. And then you bust their balls for the first time and they're kind of like, the fuck, dude, you know, <laughs> I feel like meditation. Like, hey, you joking around saying I smell like a bag of shit. Can you not? And I'm like, dude, meditation, chill out. It's like, we're, I feel like it would just be a pussy friend. It'd just be that sensitive friend who you like, you can't even fucking joke around with. You ever have that? guys out there i don't know girl do girls bust balls do you guys bust clams <laughs> yeah we're doing we're doing this there it is folks no one ladies do you bust clams what is that one is it screaming <laughs> oh, that's the that's what my show how it ends. <laughs> Just people pouring out. Why do I say my show like I don't open for people? You're such a douchebag. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't know. Do you, I meet when I moved to Los Angeles. The amount of men that you meet who don't bust balls is so alarming. And maybe I am just out of the loop with this, but I'm from the, you know, I'm from the Northeast, like Connecticut, Boston, like New England. Dudes there show zero sympathy towards their friends at any point. Like when a friend is nice to another friend, it's almost, it's more uncomfortable than when a friend is like violently rude. Like I'd rather my friends trash me to the point of, and it, like you don't feel bad though. That's like what people don't get. Like when they when you witness ball busting from the outside in, you're like, oh, that person must feel bad. But you don't know their situation because when my friends are trashing me, all I hear is, hey, we care about you so much, we want to make you uncomfortable, and arguably think about the things you don't realize people see in you, like how you're a dumb fuck and you suck. <laughs> That's how I feel. If my friends like girl, I don't know. I don't think girls do because well, they just operate differently. But like, if my friends are like, "Dude, good job, man. I'm proud of you for really like chasing what you're doing. You're, you know, chasing your dream." I think you know it's. I think it's inspiring, and I'd love to. How do you feel? Like, tell me how you feel today. I'm like, are you trying to touch my dick? Can you get the fuck away from me with that weird ass shit? And it's not that I'm scared to be like open, although I I can argue that I am, but. What am I gonna like? That's just weird. That's like a, uh, I don't know. Some friends, you know, it, and you know, not all my friends, because I you know, do I have friends that I even get like deep with. Taking off my sneaks. I'm a sneakerhead, said the 35 year old man who needs to fucking grow up and get a pair of loafers and get a job. Anyways, that's my, that's me ball busting. Uh, um, yeah, it's endearing. 
Nothing like friends just shitting on each other. And, you know, we it's not like we just do that constantly. There are moments where you can be nice, but it's not like that, like... And you, that's what you see in L.A. You see a lot of the over-the-top niceness where you're like... And I think me training my whole life, getting trashed and trashing, and I caught on to that because I'm like, that's not real. Nobody... And you always see these studies on Facebook, like, oh, your friends who swear the most and blah, 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 or your best friends. It's like... Oddly, that's true because that's the friend who feels so uncomfortable or so comfortable with you that they can be like, hey, you fucking suck. Fuck that person. You're an idiot. Shit, piss ass, balls. Fucking, you know what I'm saying? And then everybody else just. I like the last, the last girl. <laughs> ah, they're like, imagine the director for who, do, where do they get? Oh, they must have bought those sounds. Where was that sound made though? You ever think about that? Where the fuck? What gymnasium where they're like, hey guys, thanks for, you know, this is all very eager. It was probably done in LA. Very eager, like, voiceover actors. They posted about it. They go, we got this gig. It's pretty legit. You're going to be a screaming sound on a piece of shit Amazon soundboard that is going to be sold for very below price. And we're probably not going to pay you. They're in a gymnasium. Cut to that girl who's like, they're all like, okay, we're going to bring it up, all right, and then we're going to slowly take it down, and when the guy starts doing this, the girl goes, she wants to get her claim to fame. Ah! <laughs> like, fucking motherfucker, god damn it. Hey, dickhead, and she's like, <laughs> even though he's trying to be nice, I don't know. But being that I bust ball, I feel like I'm an expert at ball busting, or at least, I don't know. When I moved out here and you see that, like, weird support and like the the two they're two people are too nice here and it's like they're too nice the way you see like villains in fucking movies when they're trying to befriend like the the hero or whatever or like like i was like i want to i'm imagining like the three little pigs and the big bad wolf or like the wolf's like too <laughs> like you know trying to catch somebody that's how nice people are how people are nice out here where it's like they're so supportive you're like where are you leading what trap are you leading me down and i know it sounds like i'm very paranoid saying this but i promise you i've been out here long enough where you're like oh they they fucking hate you <laughs> i've never had a friend out here who like trashed me and then i'm like oh he doesn't like me no they're always like they always those are the ones who have your back so God, I remember fucking dudes out here, you, like, you ball bust them, and they're just like, that's seriously, like, not nice. Why would you say my dick is small? <laughs> no, I, it's fine. I I just, I don't have friends who do that. It's like, bitch, you don't have friends. You know, it's not like you don't have friends that do that. You just don't have friends. Oh, my God. If I just, I remember my ex, she, like, Girls, see, like, maybe girls bust balls. I don't think they do. I don't know. I've never seen it done. I've never seen it done. I'm not going to try to make it up. I, I wanted to think I did, but I've never seen it done. But guy guys interact differently than, like, girls interact as far as, like, girls, like, want to get deep. And how does, how did, like, when the girl, two girls talk about shit, like, they're like, so, like, how did it make you feel? If a man said that to me, I would put my fist through my own face. And then the other one, it would be like a, be like, punching them and me. I would not be able to handle that. Like, I've so many times when I used to talk to my ex, I'd hang out with my buddies. And she, I'm like, oh, you know, so-and-so is dating, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, do they seem happy? And I'm like what the fuck are you talking about? I go, I don't know. She goes, you don't ask some questions? Like, how did they meet? Like, what was the feeling of when they first met? And you don't, you didn't ask that? I go, that's equivalent to me pulling my penis out. Like, that would be so wildly uncomfortable. Yeah, so-and-so, they're, uh, they're getting married. Do they seem like they're star-crossed lovers? Did you ask them? She used to do that. Did you, well, did you, what did you even talk about then? What do you, what do you guys talk about? I'm like, how, well, how'd the conversation go? I don't know. I said, what's up? He goes, Hey, I'm getting married. I'm like, cool. Good for you, man. And then he's like, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And then we proceeded to make armpit farts and drink beer. Like what, you know, I just, are there dudes out there that talk like that? 
are there men out there where you're like, guys, I met, <laughs> I met this girl, Amanda. She's really, you know, she's something else. And they're like, stop the game. Stop the football game right now. Guys, hold on. Tell us, let's dig that. Let's really dive into, um, prove it. And then he's like, and he starts twirling and dancing. She's the one. She listens. She rubs me down. I rub her longer. I massage her feet. Every girlfriend's always wanted me to massage her feet. Come on. I'm like, I'm not touching your fucking feet. Give me a back rub. No. I'll give you one. I don't want one. I'm a man. Being a man is about being stiff, having no sleep, being constipated. Everything that manliness is being uncomfortable. Did you ever think about that? Ah, uh, you see that guy? You know, emotionally or physically? Uh, Ron's such a tough dude. It's like Ron needs a nap. He has to shit, I think. And yeah, he's stiff as fuck. That guy hasn't touched his toes since he was five. Oh my God. So like, what did you talk about then? Huh? When you and your friends talk about girls? What are they, when, when they ask about me... Oh my god, I fucking used to get this. When they ask about me, what do you say? They don't ask about you. Oh, so they don't want to know how I'm doing? They didn't say, Matt, how's... Th- how blah, blah, blah. No. What, what do you think we do? Girls think guys get in a circle and I'll hold hands and then we twirl until we're dizzy and then we get up and go... <laughs> so, Mike. Tell us about Amanda. And then we go, what are her passions? What are your passions? Where do you see yourself in five years? We don't do that. And we just throw grass at each other. <laughs> oh, fuck you. We're supposed to be the laughter. Guys. <laughs> this isn't uh, some romantic comedy. You see that in romantic comedies. That's the problem. Girls live in romantic comedy brains and guys just live in... I don't even know. It, it, again, I don't know. I When a girl... I don't know if it's just my upbringing. I've never been like open about like being like deep with my emotions. Because I remember even when I dated like past girlfriends or like you know my ex in particular like just you know where do you what do you like we one time i remember it was so uncomfortable i was just she's like what do you what are you passionate about like what do you want to do in five years i'm like i don't know fucking this stand up why do you like doing like what do you i'm like oh my god I, i'm literally gonna shit my pants I'm going to shit myself out of my ass and run away. <laughs> Imagine if you just shit the little, you ever see like men in black, the guy who like controls the dead guy. Remember when they pull the guy's ear. Okay. I'm getting annoyed. Like you guys are looking back at me, although I'm staring at a camera. This is the camera. And I'm like, <laughs> like it should give me a response. Remember when fucking men in black, they pulled the guy's ear and then it was the thing. <sighs> and he's like, sta- he was just staring the human. What if you got so uncomfortable you just can shit that man? That guy just pulls the ripcord and just falls out of an ass and just runs away. I can't take this. <laughs> oh, God. And it's weird. Because, like, I'm not, I don't just like, that's why, like, first dates are, I'm, I'll joke around all day, but, like, when it gets, like, deep, ah, uh, fuck me, you stupid asshole. On my assistant is fixing. This is how trashy I am. I have fucking marks on the ground with pencil. Ugh, when it gets like deep and pat the word passion, feeling, you know. What else? What is another weird ass like fucking there must be a, a complex I don't think there is though, because I still compassionate, you know, I'm not it's not that I'm not that though. You know what I'm saying? It's not that I don't feel like I love doing nice things for other people all the time. I'll fucking what's my love language? What's my friend language? My friend language is armpit farts slash tapping their balls with my finger very fast. So it hurts. And then calling them gay. Hey, gay. And then I touch their penis and make a fart noise. Hey, pussy. Um, but I am nice to people. I fucking like, I buy 
you know, I'll pick up dinner whenever I can. I do nice things. I'll drive people where, you know, I do nice. I like doing nice things and letting them know like, hey, this is how, you know, I, I can show you that with actions. But with my mouth, dude, with my mouth, ah, you're never going to know. You're never going to know, bitch. That's why New England people get along. It's it's crazy how, maybe not just New England, but like how when I meet somebody from New England out here, we are on the same wavelength so much. Just down to like the, the you know, there's a little bit of being miserable mixed in with like a uncertainty with a, you know, bad attitude or bad language and you know i that's what i like and like there's certain other but like people from new england like like i, I want to say texas people are closely i have a few friends from texas where we're on the same way wavelength of like the ball busting and this shit but the difference between people in new england and texas is texas people just love their state so much like even new england people are like i don't fucking love it like they're like hey, what a burger whoa Oh, you go to Bucky's and get Bluebell, and I wish I was there. I'm like, then go back. The fuck you talking about? That's the difference. You don't ever hear people go Connecticut. Oh, oh, I fucking love New York. I would go back in a second. The people who and the people who feel that way live there. Then go back. So that's where there's a difference. I don't know what triggers it as far as how we interact, but I don't know. So, am I miserable? Maybe. Although I've been not giving a fuck lately and it feels good. And I think going back to the meditation thing, I feel like meditation is triggering me to not just give a shit. I have anxiety. I have the anxiety where you, you dwell on things down the road. I'm like, oh, fucking next week I'm getting cancer. <laughs> oh, fuck. And you just live your life. It's never like you never get to that date. You always, oh, in a week it's happening. And then tomorrow it's a fucking week. Oh, baby. Your boy's blowing up. I have herpes get tested. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, what does this say? Yeah, you guys can wait. It's fine. Oh, I got a notification too. Ooh, what's up? What's up, girl? I've been thumb hustling like a motherfucker. Anyways. Ah, shit. I'm going to get cancer. Oh, I have this. Oh, I have this, but... It I don't give a fuck anymore. It's almost funny. I like it's. It feels good. Like I tell myself in this moment, I don't have anything. Guess what? Until I get that fucking test or whatever, or I start bleeding profusely from my nose or my brain or my head falls off or that little, my operator falls out of my ass and runs away saying, you're dying. I don't give a shit. And that's such a good feeling. That's all it is. Maybe that's not the agenda of the, um, meditation app that I have, but guess what? That's what I take away from it. And guys, if you feel like you give a shit too much, the hardest thing so far is just the jitters from being hung over. Not the jit. I'm not like fucking in my bed shivering because, but booze kind of throws it off. But you know, throughout day to day, I'm like, I don't give a fuck, dude. Fuck. Although you got to be careful with that because I have that feeling that, that like, I don't give a fuck can get in the way of you being disciplined with like, other things so there's times where i want to you know eat fucking shitty and you know the good the side of me is like dude stop being a bitch the, the root of the trash talking there's like a little nucleus that's where that fucking little dude sits he just looked like a fucking garbage truck driver from the bronx even though i'm from connecticut when i want to go reach for that Reese's, he goes hey you fucking loser you you already have a soft body and you want to justify eating that I'm going to I'm going to work hard right at the gym. Really? Cuz it looks like you're not working hard enough and just these little dialogues between my brain and my pussy brain. My pussy brain. What if you just had a vagina in your brain? That's where all like the fucking <laughs> I want to eat ice cream and then your ball sack size like yeah. <laughs> Shut up, pussy. Eat some fucking chicken. Maybe maybe you won't be scrawny and girls will like run away from you. That's when that's when you got to be careful of not giving a fuck too much because that I don't give a sh I don't care mentality can like start to fog the decision or the the reprimanding of your like stern brain. 
the stern side. So like I'll have days where I'm like, ah, fuck it. I work out and you crush McDonald's, you get some ramen and pizza. So you gotta be, you know, just be an alpha. That's all it is. It's when you're fucking beta. We're all, it's like your sexuality, what they call it, say it's on a gradient. I don't want to be rude and say beta's gay, straight, but you know, I'm saying like, you're not, it's not cut and dry. So you got to know how to manage the beta. The beta in me wants to just get milkshakes and be fat and fucking, you know, find a fat, ugly, you know, partner and just, me and her just, you know. Why do I, why does she have to be fat, man? I don't know. Shut the fuck up. Doesn't matter. Anyways, um, I'm not trying to be, I'm always worried. See, I said that because I was worried people were going to watch this and go, what the fuck? The beta in me just wants to just not, you know, just eat ice cream and fucking not. But then there's only so much you can take of that where the other side of me is like, are you fucking kidding me? One time I was eating shirtless at my kitchen table and the way my stomach spilled over my belt. I immediately took that food and threw it away. And I go, you're eating a chicken breast until that fupa of yours is gone. And if you're not going to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to heckle you in the mirror. And guess what? Some would say that's rude to be that hard on myself, but I can draw the line people. I'm not a psycho where I'm just like doing that 24 seven. Uh, sorry, more texts. Sorry, my. Sorry, it's my boss, Drew Lynch. Hey, Drew, you're texting me right now. Maddie, you're so funny. Can you write more of my jokes? <laughs> oh, my God. Did I just blast him? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'll text him after. I'm ignoring you right now, Drew. I hope you watch this part. She's getting fucking owned. No. Um, yeah. But as far as the worry side of my brain, which is a, a, a category of the beta... There's like a beta brain. It's like your left and right side. You have a little, everybody has a little beta. It just depends how big it is. And I feel like you can shrink it down because no man wants to be a beta. A beta man is skinny fat. A beta man is the guy who takes his kids on vacation and his family and he gets lost in parking garages for an hour. You ever go to like a parking garage and you see the guy leading his family up the ramp? You go, you know, they have fucking stairs here, right, sir? You're their leader. As a dad in the family, you're the f goddamn leader. And if you don't know how to navigate your poor family, who looks up to you, if you can't navigate them out of a parking garage, I think you need to fly home. Maybe, what if you can hire an alpha escort that just brings your family around? It's like a bodyguard. But <laughs> the fucking dad. Jim, come on, over here, let's go. Stairs now, and he's like, oh, "Well, we got ice and cream." He's like, "No, you don't." And then maybe he can. That should be a thing. They should have like an alpha trainer. Like it's maybe maybe fitness bleeds into it, but like they must have that. Alpha trainers, I'm down for that. They just show up, they kick your door down, and go, "Listen, bitch," and they just rip up my fucking throw pillows. Do you guys want to see my bed? This is a beta bed if I've ever seen one before. Look at that. Ooh, my beta bed. Oh. If I had an alpha coach, he would come in here and just stab my bed until it was a pile of shit. Ooh, look at my little bitch ass apartment. Hey. I'm gonna hire a fucking that's my new company. I'm I deserve it. My beta half is just like, I deserve it. I want to be comfy. I don't give a fuck. My mom sent me that. And if you think I'm throwing them away, you can, I'll fight you. Ugh. Don't take my sense of design for any weakness. Just the way people tend to overlook humor for stupidity. Because I promise you, you think this is girly? I'll fist fight you right there. Right next to my metal reindeer. Which is a decorative piece. It's not seasonal. Alright? Alpha coach. This guy just shows up. What's up, bitch? He goes, okay, first things first. Uh, we'd start with diet. First things first. You eat eggs. You eat fucking bacon. Although, unless you're... we can Okay, we can sprinkle in eating healthy. Eating healthy is not bitch shit. You eat eggs, you eat oatmeal, 
You get your protein, you get your carbs in, and you rip coffee black. There's the first thing. I don't care. I like cream with it. Yeah, you like cream with it? Do you like cream in your ass, too? Drink the coffee black. Maybe one ice cube so you can drink it faster. That's what I do. That's what I do, baby. Black coffee, two ice cubes, so I can just rip it like a shot of Jaeger. Every time I chug coffee, I go, hey, I wish this was fucking Jaeger. He comes in there. He looks at your wardrobe. Oh, fedoras, fucking scarves. Oh, cool bracelets, although I kind of like bracelets. Do you, bitch? See, I'm, 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 it's like turmoil right now. I don't know. I feel like if, you know, you're, you're, you're beta if you're a sneakerhead. I just said it right there. If you're an old man, if you're above 30 and you're like, I like Jordans. No, this guy's going to come in and go, where's your boots? Where's your, you know, sneakers that are not pristinely clean? And you maybe have, you know, you got some nice dress shit in there because obviously you don't look like a slob. This guy watches you interact with women. He just stands there. You good, dude? If you're just like, so you think we can like go? He goes, fucking ask. Redo. Redo it. He has a whistle. <laughs> Again. You go up to this girl. I think we should get be You think? Again. <laughs> Until you go, yo, we're getting beer tomorrow. He goes, fuck, he flexes so hard. This guy would just, some people need that. That's my new, sir. fuck stand-up. It's being funny, Beta. No, fuck no, being funny is just separate from all this shit. All these dudes who can't ball bust. <laughs> He's being mean to me. He's fucking just drill sergeant alpha coach. Well, then you're a bitch. You ever think about that? <laughs> See, all the cool dudes are laughing, and this is all the bait is here. <laughs> this is what they hear when they get ball busted. <laughs> hey, man, the fuck up. Sorry, I keep looking at my phone. Your mom's texting me. Ooh. I got a bitch ass bed. Whoa. Oh, got a bitch ass bed. Da -da 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 -da. Oh shit, two ice cans. Okay, 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 Hollywood. Yep, I'm here. Can I make it? Yeah, I did. Thank you. Alpha coaching with Maddie Chimber. I just kick in your door. My foot gets stuck, and then I have to have the jaws of life take it out. He's half alpha, half beta. He'll teach you how to be hard and soft. <laughs> And then I'm like, Egh. in the info commercial, not your dick, though. Unless that's an issue, and then we can talk about talk to your provider about that. But you'll be hard and soft, coaching with Maddie. You'll go in a bar. You'll get rejected. You'll get a girl's number. You'll, you know, it's okay. Now I'm completely going back on what I was saying. Take me a high young love. Boom. What was I talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah, giving, not giving a shit. But, yeah, anyways. It's good now. I, you got to focus the I don't care on the dumb shit. Shit, I've... Cancers that aren't even real. I've back and heel cancer. Because I stepped on a Lego. Ah! It wouldn't have hurt that bad if I didn't have heel cancer. I think we all need a, a good dose of calm the fuck down. Doesn't matter. I was watching an interview with Jerry Seinfeld. So No, I... All these people, like, everybody, you know, he's a comedy god, which I, you know, I'm a fan of his. But what I appreciate, I don't think it's, he knows everything. I think he just knows how he likes to work. And he's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like, I was watching an interview and, like, Tom Pop was like, so, Jerry, I do this during the day and I do this. Is that okay? And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, do you think it's too much to write too much? And he's like, no. I, like, you just, that's when I, it clicked. I'm like, he just doesn't give a fuck. He found a thing that works that gets him where he, from point A to B, and that's it. I think you all need that. I think everybody needs that. Matt, you got to do your podcast once a week and be, and be good about it. Really? How about this? How about I do it once every 49 days? And guess what? From the first 49 days, it's going to change again because I don't give a shit. 
just find something that you how you like to operate and i feel like it'll put you at ease i feel like everybody it's hard to not it's hard because you you know you idolize people you look outside in like they do this and then and then you compare yourself to that and then you can never you're never doing it right because you're always trying to like it's like when you're like you you know you remember growing up you're like drawing something in like art class you're like is this the fucking right fucking draw the weird shit who gives a fuck jerry seinfeld he goes i i write every day i do this I do that, and everyone, you know, people like, can I do that? And he's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. That's when it starts to click, and you just don't give a shit, boy. What if I just shit my pants? I don't give a fuck, dude. I don't give a I'm just pissing and shitting my... I like the little man metaphor of running out of my body. That's hilarious. <laughs> Guys. Go out today and bust your friend's balls. And if they look at you weird and don't let smirk and then it bust your balls back and then you guys laugh and go have a beer, that's not your friend. Thank you for watching the Maddie Chamber podcast. If you want to bust my balls, bring it. I would gladly trash you and then we can take shots of black coffee together or if it's later at night, Jaeger. Goodbye. Oh, this new crazy mother.